this has been explained many times by a lot of other people, but um, since you're watching this, just for a quick recap of the auxiliary switch wiring, if you look up here on your driver's side next to your brake reservoir, you're gonna see these wires coming out right here. And they were taped up to that large loom right there, but I pulled the tape off. So these are your wires that are coming for your auxiliary switches if you are so equipped. If you ordered your Bronco with auxiliary switches, these are coming from the switches. And as I understand it, between this and those switches, there's actually relays already built in. That's why you can go ahead and cut off and not use the relays if you wish that come with, uh, say, whatever lights you buy. You can just cut off the relays and then all you're doing is tying in your power to this and then you ground your lights. Um, but if you have something that runs a lot of power, takes a lot of power, you don't have a switch that you want to use because you just already used your 20, you know, I already used your 15, but you want to put another light bar on that's going to take that much power. What you can do is still keep your relay that came with your lights and you can use whichever one of these from whatever switch because this will then essentially just be a trigger switch. So you'll just hook this up to your trigger wire for your relay that you're going to use that came with your lights already. So I went ahead and ran the, the wires directly to my lights to, to power them because I did the math and um, they're fine for the amperage. For the driver's side wiring, I think the best place is probably about right here. I'm going to drop it down right there where the battery comes up next to the frame. And you'll see I already have one ran down here. And it comes out right from in there. You can reach up behind the bumper and grab it and pull it through. And then you'll connect it to all of your other lights here. And then once you've done that, you can put them all back in there and then pull it up through the top. That'll get rid of all of the excess wiring. And then you might want to just zip it down the best places you find. Now for the passenger side, fog light wiring, I found probably right here is going to be the easiest and straight down shot. So if you can feed it in right there, you got your head right behind the headlight there. That has actually came down and dropped out right there, as you can see. So right above the fog lights. So I'm going to feed the rest of those down through there. And then just like the other side, connect them and then I'll pull it up to get rid of the slack and then try and secure them. So none of that will be able to drop back down in there. To save you some grief later on, I've noticed that if you just take these, push them together, they don't just click in. So what I figured out is when you push it in all the way in, then push the clip up and it'll click in. That way you won't have these fall apart on you later on and your light stops working and you have no idea why. There's a lot of different ways to wire this. I'll show you the way that I did. Um, but you know, if you're comfortable with a different way, you're comfortable with butt connectors, you're comfortable with, uh, you know, some other way, then, you know, go for it. Uh, what I like to do is, uh, I have these connectors here. They have actually solder in the middle. So you can put the wires in and put all the wires together in the middle. And then when you heat it up, I uh, use a, uh, I just use a lighter, um, get the solder in here to melt first and it'll actually go over all of the wiring inside there. So you can see on the other one, I did that with the blue wires and then I have the power wire in there. So I did the math and on these rough country lights, you end up with basically 15 amps and I'd rather save my auxiliary switch number one for something else. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't need that big switch to run these lights. Um, so auxiliary switch two is 15 amps. So it's perfect, uh, which is the uh, green wire with the brown stripe. So since you have six wires going in there plus the power, instead of having six wires on one side, trying to go down to that one wire on the other side, I went ahead and just put three of the blue in each side and then ran my power into one side. So as you can see here, I'm running auxiliary six switch. So these are the backlights of the, um, the backlighting of the auxiliary, the backlighting of the rough country lights, I should say. So, which is the yellow with the orange stripe. So I have three 
of the lights running in from the left, three running in from the right, and then I have the power cable going in there. So much easier to fit them in. You can use one of these things since it'll be the same size wires going in both sides instead of trying to downsize from six to one. So hopefully that makes sense. And then uh, I'm just gonna use one of these other bolts here for the grounding. So I'll, I'll do a quick here um, um, look at how the wiring finished up. So you can see these are just tied up right here. And you can see I have my two power wires running in there. Um, and I, like I said, again, I use switch two and I use switch six. I'm going to use switch six, six and have uh, that switch on all the time. So the switches are also, they, they work by the ignition. So those switches aren't going to put any power through until your ignition is on. So I want the back lights on for these fog lights whenever I'm driving. So I'm going to leave switch six on all the time. That way, whenever the Bronco's running, it'll turn the back lights on. And then when I shut it off, I don't have to worry about it. Um, and then switch two, I just flip on and off whenever I wanna actually have the full light power on. So you can see I ran the passenger side lights up along there. I tied it all the way to that loom. It goes across right through there, and then it drops down right in the corner. And for the driver's side, Ran right here, I actually zip tied them to, uh, looks like it's gonna be your hood release cable, all the way up here, and then right here, they drop down, and they go right down to the light. Um, just while I'm here for note, right here, this was where my hood cable was rubbing on that metal right there. So, and it's pretty sharp, and you can see where there's some rubbing from the, the rubber, so I'm probably gonna put um, a piece of hose around that, or something else to um, shield that from some abrasion. So later on, I don't have a problem opening my hood if it eats through that, or even you know one of these cables here.